Well, hello there and welcome into the latest edition of Three Dog Thursday as part of the Winning Cures Everything platforms. I am the somewhat capable, somewhat competent host, TJ Reeves. He is the guy behind everything Winning Cures on YouTube, on social media, winningcureseverything.com. Hello, my Three Dog Thursday brother from another mother, Gary Seegers. Good to be back with you. Even though both of us are smarting from a week one, one and two week, each of us able to get one pooch home. The other two, we don't really want to talk about. I am done with San Jose State, by the way. I'm done with them. Uh, I don't know if you're done with Northwestern at this point. Good to have you, my friend. (laughs) Of course. Hey, the one that I was so irritated about, South Florida. Yes. They were home. They were there. Freshman quarterback fumbles the ball with like a minute and five seconds left or whatever it was, and it, it Western Kentucky returns it for a touchdown to blow my cover? I know. I'm just irritated. Western irritated. Kentucky's I, hey. been good. USF's been bad for a while. Uh, then again, on bad beats, I worked the game on oh, yeah. national radio where it looked like West Virginia had covered late with the touchdown in the two, and then – they started taking timeouts at the end of the game, and James Franklin's like, okay, we'll go ahead and cover the number then if you want to take timeouts. We'll score a touchdown ourselves and kick the extra point. So if you had West Virginia, you were a loser. If you oh. had Colorado, who we're going to talk about on the show, you were in great shape the whole way. Give me a quick comment before we get into the underdogs, my friends. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, it's everywhere. Is the hype too much right now? Is it? Is it maybe poised for a crash for Colorado as we go along now, or what is your take, Gary Seegers? I don't think it's primed for a crash just yet. Uh, This is the first home game. I think they're going to be amped up for this one. Uh, This team is just significantly better than we assumed that they would be. My uh, The stuff that I was worried about with them still holds true. They still don't have great line play. They TCU ran the ball over 30 times for 7.1 yards per carry. Like it, that's that's still going to happen. On offense, they couldn't run the football. They ran for 1.6 yards per carry. But what I did not take into account is that Sean Lewis has been doing this for a long time. That's the offensive coordinator there, formerly the right. uh, head coach at Kent State. He he runs. He's the fastest offense in football. He runs plays that are designed to kind of hide his offensive line. TCU wasn't able to take advantage of it. Nebraska might be, All right? But Eh, I, they are going to be amped up at Folsom oh, no, Field yeah. this we'll, weekend. We'll yeah. touch on that coming up. And and notice I used the play on words. Are they primed? I think they might be. By, <laughs> by the way, I did see the official mention during the game broadcast from beginning to end on Fox with Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, and company. 57, 57 times they uttered either Deion Sanders or Coach Prime during the game. That, I mean, I, I realize coaches make the world go around, but that was a little much. We'll see if it continues. Anyway, thank you for finding us, however you've done so, through winningcureseverything.com, the platforms, whether you found us through a social media link. Again, it's Three Dog Thursday. We're here on Thursdays, also in podcast form. So we've got a video show if you're seeing us. Thank you for finding us on the video show. We're also in podcast form if you're hearing us on the podcast because there's a lot of people that subscribe through the years for Three Dog Thursday. Uh, Gary, this is something that I began doing on local radio. I've told you this before, back in the mid-1990s in Tampa Bay. I continued it on national radio, on Sirius XM, and, uh, and other outlets uh, into the 2010s, and now I've been doing it in podcast form since 2014, picking underdogs, and in this case, we're honing it in just on college football underdogs for the college football season. So we have some establishment, but if you're only hearing us, come find the video show. Come see what we look like uh, here on the Winning Cures Everything platforms, winningcureseverything.com, and their YouTube page for all of this. So again, thank you. Make sure you're following or subscribing on the podcast platforms, but also find us on the video with all of that being said we look to bounce back we're trying to give the audience three each three correct each i'll settle for two each uh that are correct because that's a winning week two and one's a winning week we will take that but the ultimate goal is three for three dog thursday so let's begin on the third weekend what's called week two of the college football season because we began on week zero and you're going to go back to a doggy that you had in week zero this time a road dog in a fascinating matchup between Jacksonville State and Coastal Carolina. Tell me about doggy number one on the show. Doggy number one, Coastal last year, and, and it continued into this year, number 93 in predicted points added per rush. Uh, they're not good at stopping the run. They're just not. They're, they're, uh, their defensive line is 
just not set up to be able to stop something like what Rich Rod is doing at Jacksonville State. They were number 102 in rushing explosiveness allowed, and UCLA was able to do basically whatever they wanted against them. Uh, UCLA's problem, not being able to cover last week, they threw two picks in the end zone. Uh, just absolute disaster moments, and uh, and they settled for a couple of field goals. Like It was, it was a mess. Uh, Rich Rod knows how to take advantage of a defense like this, and, of course, we'll toss out a trend. Coastal is 0-3 against the spread as a two-touchdown home favorite uh, in their last three, dating all the way back to 2021. Uh, I, I like this. I think I like the coaching matchup. I like Rich Rod a whole lot more than I like Tim Beck. Uh, what Coastal has on offense is not set up to run what Tim Beck wants to do, right? They they were – that Jamie Chadwell system was – completely different than the pro style sets that Tim Beck wants to do. Grayson McCall is still good, but I, I think Jacksonville state certainly hangs in this game. I mean, the number's 14 and a half right now. I will, uh, I will take Jacksonville state on this one. Too often. We say too many points on three dog Thursday. Gary's looking at this and saying for Jacksonville state, which won that debut game as an FBS team, as a division one team with UTEP a couple of weeks ago, too many points. Too many points here, even though it is a road game in Conway, South Carolina. That's a night game uh, coming up. I'm looking for television because there's television everywhere. It's an ESPN Plus game if you have that service uh, for Coastal and Jacksonville State. So that is doggy number one. Let's move on on Three Dog Thursday with the college underdogs. I'm going to go to a game that I got to work on national radio, Gary, a couple of years ago, the Farmageddon game that they're calling it. Iowa State and Iowa, the new name for the rivalry, the Cyhawk Trophy etc. Iowa has dominated this series, but uh, again, they've not been high scoring games last year for whatever it's worth a 10, seven game. Uh, the year that I worked the game two years ago, finished 27, 17, but there was a late defensive touchdown. What else by Iowa? They seem so <laughs> offensively challenged that last week in their opening game, they scored a couple of touchdowns with Cade McNamara, the quarterback, uh, the transfer from Michigan in the first quarter. That's considered an offensive explosion for Iowa that they scored 14 points in the first quarter. I think this is the same kind of low scoring game at, uh, at Ames Saturday afternoon. And I got an angle. Gary, I got an angle. My guy Rocco Beck, the red shirt freshman quarterback. I've known Rocco since he was a little guy. He's the son of Anthony Beck, former Buccaneer and, and multi-team tight end in the National Football League. Beck, a former West Virginia All Big East tight end, former number one pick of the Jets. This is his son, Rocco Beck, who can run, throw, dual threat, ran for a touchdown last week, threw a couple. Rocco and Iowa State, I think, finally break through against Iowa. I believe they will win the game outright. I will take the points on Three Dog Thursday on a Saturday afternoon in Ames, and they will be partying uh, all in and around the campus after a win uh, in this matchup. Again, you go back over the recent history of the last six or seven years, all of these games are like in the teens, and they're all one-score games. A quick thought, Gary, here I like. Iowa State in the matchup at 2.30 local time, 3.30 Eastern time on Fox, getting uh, the four points here against the Hawkeyes real quick. I was terrified of this game <laughs> because you don't know who is actually going to play in the game, right? We we know there's a bunch of starters out for Iowa State. True. There's not as many out for Iowa. Uh, yeah, it, Iowa State finally got the monkey off their back last year uh, with that win. And you remember I was so gung-ho about it, but Iowa had won like seven straight leading into last year. Well, now, uh, I, I like where you're going with the quarterback there. He did look really good against Northern Iowa in that first game. It, it, let's let's talk about Kirk Ferentz right quick. I don't I don't think he cared. Parker brought this up to me, by the way, from the Bet U.S. College Football Show. Uh, do we think that Kirk Ferentz just doesn't care about this contract for Brian Ferentz? where they have to average 25 points a game. You talked about the offensive explosion in that first quarter, and then they did nothing the rest of the right, game. Right. Like It's pretty bad. What? And again, his son has been uh, embroiled in all kinds of controversy on would he be an offensive coordinator anywhere else, including maybe Iowa high school football, if he was not Kirk Ferentz's son. So you're, you're right. It's comical. They have it written into the contract that he has to average a certain amount of points per game or he's not going to be in there. 24 last week. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, we'll see. But I, I just like Iowa State in this spot. The Cyhawk game, again, they will be ready to roll uh, in this matchup at Jack Trice Stadium. Uh, they were oh, so yeah. fired up 
two years ago, three hours before the game. We were going through the tailgate, the whole thing, and then they played poorly. They turned it over. They played right into Iowa's hands. You bring up a great point. They've still got the gambling scandal that has run off several players, including the star running back, including the former quarterback. I think Iowa State, though, bows up in this game. I will take them as doggy number one on Three Dog Thursday. We're rocking and rolling, 300 dogs each here on the program, whether you're seeing us on the Winning Cures Everything platforms or hearing us on the podcast. Gary, give me a hound. Give me a second underdog and why uh, here for this week. I'm going to take Eastern Michigan, and you can get 21 with them at Minnesota. Uh, There are several books that have that number out there. I think people got scared off of Eastern Michigan because they only beat Howard by 10 points last week. But Howard, pretty good ball club, at especially FCS level. Uh, that's a team that Eastern Michigan was up 30-9 to nine at the half. And then they just kind of called off the dogs, right? Uh, they end up winning 33-23. to 23. So second half, it's just go through the motions, right? Incredibly vanilla offense. But if you look at what they did in that first half, uh, this is still an offense for Chris Creighton that knows how to fling it around. They understand what they need to do on defense. This is a feisty team. Any any other team in the MAC will tell you that Eastern Michigan plays dirty. They, they will fight you on the field, and that's exactly what, uh, what they're going to do against Minnesota. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think Nebraska probably a better team than Eastern Michigan. And Minnesota did get that win against Nebraska, but they got dominated in that ball game, even though they got the win. Right, their post game win expectancy in that game last week was like four percent. Like they they should not have won it. Uh, other other than for of course the four turnovers that, uh, yep. that Jeff Sims and company gave over to them. Um, I don't I don't really like Minnesota's run game a lot, but they're still going to try and run it uh, this weekend. And I think they're going to shorten this game a little bit. Twenty one points is a lot. Uh, trend on this one: Eastern Michigan eleven five and one as a 10-plus point road underdog Ooh, in their last 17. I knew Chris it Creighton. was good. What did you say? 11-5-1? Oh, yeah. 11, 11-5-1. Five, five, and one. And one. Yeah. In they their are last in their last 16 uh, or or 17. In, in their last 17 as a 10-plus or more. I know our buddy Brian Edwards, who we both love from Vegas Infi- Insider, he has been all over Eastern Michigan for like the last – three seasons basically oh, yeah. saying cover machine especially when a huge underdog and you're going right there uh for the eagles at minnesota that is a night game that's a 6 30 local time start big 10 television network has that one uh there from the minnesota campus very interesting for eastern michigan getting a that's ton a, of that's points. a phenomenal coach by the way chris creighton i mean unbelievable head coach he's not going to get a bigger job but what he has done there in ypsilanti is Freaking fantastic. Give them, give them credit. They have been oh, around awesome. uh, in the MAC and they have been a contender. There is no doubt. Uh, by the way, again, uh, Gary keeps making mention of this. Find he and Parker and Kyle on the Bet US College Football Show. Little cross promotion, little cross pollination <laughs> here. Bet US College Football Show on the Bet US TV platforms, uh, their YouTube, etc. That's what he's making reference to. Great handicapping on this show. This on that show. This show is only about underdogs. We're out on Thursday. Hence the name. Three Dog Thursday, and uh, we love giving underdogs. All right, so you've given two. That means I need to even things up and give a second underdog to the audience. Let's go all the way to Potato Land. Let's go to Boise, Idaho, Boise State, and UCF. A week ago, we saw UCF rock and roll at home uh, in their opening game. John Reese Plumley at quarterback. I mean, they rolled. Uh, to an easy win in Orlando. Now they got to go all the way out to Boise where Boise is angry. I saw some of the first half of the game with Washington and then Tampa's finest Michael Penix, the left-handed quarterback, lit Boise State up. I think that's more about Washington being good than Boise State being bad in this instance. Boise State now at home, Gary Seegers. I am liking the Broncos as a home dog to maybe win this game outright with UCF feeling themselves a little bit off a big opening week blowout win. Got to come all the way out there on the blue turf. Boise State getting three and a half at home, I think can win this game outright. Uh, Any thought real quick on my underdog here as Boise State doesn't want to be 0-2 in the early season, and that's that's a tough travel for UCF, about a six-hour flight, literally, to the oh, yeah. northwest part of the continent. And I think they're going to be ready in the home opener. Boise State here. Quick thought on that, on my second you, underdog. You might be on to something here. Uh, I'm I'm terrified of this one. 
because I think there is a world where UCF just houses them. Mm. Uh, Washington beat them with the passing game. I think that secondary for Boise, a little overrated. Uh, they lost some guys in that back seven for sure. Uh, UCF, though, talent-wise, significantly better. They're in the top 35 in team talent composite over at 247 Sports. Boise is number 71, so that's a big issue. The other part of this is, is Bush Hamden, the offensive coordinator for Boise, going to actually let Taylor Green run? That was what they did last week, and he talked about it the entire fall camp, about how they're going to get Green to stay in the pocket, and he's going to be a pocket pass. That kid is not a pocket passer. Like, he, his best weapon is his legs. Like, his wheels, man. They need to let him go. If they do that this week, uh, they could absolutely win the game outright. Um, but I'm I'm terrified that they're just going to try and make him throw, and, and UCF could make him look bad if uh, if they do that. All right, so that is my second underdog. I believe in them a little more than uh, Gary does. And again, Orlando, about 70 miles away from where I do the show in West Central Florida and Tampa Bay. Uh, as they've now entered the Big 12, and they'll be playing the Big 12 slate coming up. Gary, again, is in the Mid-South in the Memphis, Tennessee area. Uh, love Gary's insight on everything here with Winning Cures. All right, so two underdogs in the books. We're not going to go officially on the record on Nebraska-Colorado, either one of us, for Nebraska as an underdog. We briefly touched on this game. What an atmosphere it's going to be in Boulder. And it gives us a chance to mention one of our sponsors, which is Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. If you're trying to go to this game, which, Gary, it's a Saturday 10 a.m. local time start, the, the Fox Big Noon Saturday game. Once again, it's noon Eastern. It's a 10 local start in Boulder for this match. They are going to be lathered up Friday night and just roll oh. right on through to Saturday, 10 a.m. in Boulder. A debacle. <laughs> but if you are trying to get into Folsom Field for this matchup with Nebraska, because these used to be old Big 8 rivals, and then they used to be Big 12 rivals for a little while before Nebraska went to the Big 10. Eventually, Colorado went to the Pac-12. Now, Colorado, I can't keep up with this crap. Colorado coming back to the Big 12. Maybe Nebraska will be back in the Big 12 at some point. I have no idea. They used to be bigger rivals. They haven't played in a while in Boulder. The get-in price right now on the secondary ticket market is over $400 to sit in the upper level. So again, we want you to use our friends at Ticket Smarter because they've got the best prices on the secondary market. Your purchase is safe and secure through them. Your tickets are guaranteed. And we've got a promo code, Gary's uh, site here, WCE, Winning Cures Everything. Put the promo code in, WCE20. Take $20 off your order of $300 or more. You're not getting in to Colorado and Nebraska right now in the secondary market for under 400 bucks. Take $20 off on us. Use Ticket Smarter for the best competitive pricing. Use the Ticket Smarter mobile app. And again, the promo code is WCE20. That one clicks for a $20 savings. Use that code, Gary, for anything. College football, NFL, concerts, anything. Use it as much as you want, but use it right now for Colorado, Nebraska. Uh, and again, that's one of our sponsors, Ticket Smarter. Ticket Smarter mobile app. Again, think smarter with Ticket Smarter. Get in the game with Ticket Smarter. And the promo code is WCE20. A purchase of $300 or more, which that's what it's going to cost you for a ticket, 20 bucks off. And that's going to, I mean, again, they are jacked for Dion, for Shador Sanders, oh. for Travis Hunter on both sides of the ball. Will they have, just give me a quick 30 second take, will they have a little come down? You mentioned this earlier, a little let down in front of the home fans. Or do you think they come out? firing in this game I, quick thought i think they come out firing in this spot i mean it's the first home game i know it's an early kick but they had an early kick last week so they're kind of used to this at this point um in front of those home crowd or in front of the home crowd i expect dion and company to absolutely they're, just they're talking it. about this is the most anticipated home game maybe in this century for them you got to go back to like the 90s cordell stewart before that eric b at quarterback when they were the oh, national yeah. championship buffaloes they haven't had this kind of anticipation i just wonder if that moment and all of that attention and all the hype they've been getting that they aren't going to be a little flat. And Matt Rule can coach defense. He maybe doesn't have oh, great yeah. talent, but he can coach defense. I totally see this as a low-scoring game. The total's like in the 60s. I could totally see this like a 20-17 to 17 game, a 23-20 to 20 game, way under that total. I could totally it, see Nebraska possible. holding them down and losing a one-score game. And so, so here's what I'm a little concerned about for Colorado. Tony White is the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, right? And he runs that 3-3-5. He's part of that San Diego State tree. And that defense is set up to stop yep. offenses like this. So 
Yeah, it, and, and of course, Nebraska is going to try and run the ball, and I think they'll have some success doing it that can shorten the game. Less plays, less opportunities. Uh, yeah, Very true. I, I think it's going to be fun. It is going to be a lot of fun. And again, there's game tape out there now of what Colorado was doing last week. And I think that's going to make a difference moving forward, too. And they have back to back games coming with Oregon and USC like like Dion Coach Prime can keep saying we kept the receipts. We kept the receipts. Well, there's a lot of people keeping receipts on his week one behavior after the game. And if they start getting (laughs) whacked down the road, those receipts will come out, too. We'll see how long this hype train lasts. But again, get into that game at Folsom Field and use our second our uh, secondary ticket sponsor uh, ticket. Ticket Smarter, Ticket Smarter mobile app, WCE20 is a $20 off promo code. Utilize that. And by the way, if you're going to Alabama, Texas, we're not picking that game on the show. I, I don't feel Texas with only seven points, six or seven points at Alabama. Gary Lean's Alabama. I've worked a lot of Alabama games. This could easily be a Crimson Tide 10, 14, 17 point win, something like that at home. So I'm staying away. But if you're trying to get into that game as well, $400 for the better uh, seats in this game. The upper level, the upper top end zone of Bryant Denny Stadium is like 150 bucks. Use that promo code again, WCE20, to get into Texas, Alabama in Tuscaloosa Saturday night and save you some money. Use our secondary sponsor. Remember that code. We appreciate that as part of Three Dog Thursday. Final few minutes, whether you're seeing us on video or in podcast form, my friend, underdog number three, and you're going to go out west for this one oh the brand new members of the acc of course we can't get enough of cal against (laughs) wake forest or cal against miami or boston college in the future but for right now they'll play an sec team in auburn what attracts you to this game for three dog thursday since 2018 cal is 17 9 and 1 as an underdog and they are 3 and 1 as a home dog in the last two years Mm. Uh, justin wilcox knows how to cover but what i am more interested in is this Jake Spavital offense going against Hugh Freeze in that Auburn defense that wasn't great last week? I, I was a little surprised when you look at the numbers. Uh, Cal can run the ball now. I, look, the Ott kid uh, that's the running back for them, he is fantastic. He was fantastic last year, but now whether it's Sam Jackson at quarterback or Ben Finley, uh, they were able to put up a ton of points. They They ran the most plays of any team in week one. 95 wow. plays they were wow. moving more than anybody that Auburn... more than more than even in that colorado tcu game that nobody ran yes. 90 plus plays wow with all those exactly. points. exactly they they were getting after it and it to me it doesn't matter who the quarterback is here uh sam jackson went out with a little bit of an injury he did practice on tuesday um i'm i think that cal can win this game outright because i don't think auburn is prepared for this offense Right, they haven't seen much of it. Uh, Spavital has has changed some things up. I like what Cal's doing. Uh, Auburn not great at stopping explosive plays against UMass. Uh, they were able to keep him out of the end zone, but I don't know. I think Cal's got something up their sleeve for this one. I, I'm not necessarily trusting Hugh Freeze in his first road game with the Auburn Tigers. Uh, yeah, I'll take Cal. Uh, you can get seven out there. Uh, there's a couple of different books where you can get seven, and uh, and at most of the places six and a half. I'll still take it all the way down to six. So I, I like Cal here. All right, Cal at home, 7.30 Pacific time, 10.30 Eastern time. ESPN will show it all over the country. Auburn going all the way out to Berkeley uh, for the matchup uh, with Cal. I have one final underdog, and it's also a Pac-12 team, and it's also a game on Saturday night, and this is uh, Washington State and Wisconsin. It's actually Saturday afternoon Pacific time in the Palouse, 4.30 Pacific time, 7.30 Eastern time. ABC has the game. This is revenge for Wisconsin. Now, new coach Luke Fickle, takes over here he wasn't the coach obviously a year ago Washington State at home uh, with Ward at quarterback who was great in the first game with over 450 yards passing again revenge for Wisconsin because Washington State beat them Wisconsin is a preseason top 10 team took a loss to Washington State last year I'm getting six at home in the Palouse another Pac-12 home doggy here Washington State's been pretty good as a home underdog as well I will take them as underdog number three. Do you have any thought to dissuade me on Wisconsin uh, rolling in here? Always a good offensive line, can always run the ball. Any thought here, Gary, on this final underdog that I'm taking? I I think Wisconsin is obviously going to run the ball. Phil Longo is the new OC, and everybody immediately thinks air raid, and they're going to sling it around. Uh, This guy also understands what he has there. 
uh, and they're calling it the Dairy Raid. So it, <laughs> they're they're going to run the football, which will make it a shorter game, which should lead to a closer game. I am infatuated with Washington State's new offensive coordinator, Ben Arbuckle. He was at Western Kentucky last year, youngest OC in the country last year. And then, of course, he comes over, gets a P5 job, and he replaces Eric Morris, who took the North uh, Texas head coaching job. I, what he did with Cam Ward in week one looked like mm-hmm. a completely different quarterback. I, I'm interested. I'm interested in this. I, I want to see how they can line up here. Uh, if you look at Washington State as an underdog, uh, let's see, since 2018, let's go all the way back. Uh, since 2018, as a uh, home underdog, they're 5-3. and three. I'll take Five it. And three against the spread. I'll take it. And an yeah, outright win sure. at outright win at Wisconsin a year ago as the underdog uh, in this matchup. Wish I had that for three dog Thursday in advance, but I did not uh, <laughs> on on that. We'll see what happens again. Uh, that one's 730 Eastern time, 430 afternoon game. A lot of night games that we have here on three dog Thursday. And before we are done and recapping, give me a quick thought. I did briefly mention Alabama, Texas marquee game again in Tuscaloosa Saturday night. I just that line to me seems to be about right. I can see this be I, I just I can't get on Texas for three dog Thursday purposes. When I saw uh, what Milrow did last week. Uh, with the fact that they have some skilled players still at Alabama, Nick Saban still the coach. Uh, this was a close game a year ago, one on a last-second field goal by Alabama in Austin. This is a different animal, though, in Tuscaloosa here, the elephant. A different animal. My thoughts. Your thought <laughs> real quick on, on this one? So I, I took this line, Alabama, minus 6.5 about a month ago. Right As soon as that thing went down to 6.5, I grabbed it. Uh, it's been sitting at 7 ever since. And I think the number's probably about right, right? And I do think eventually by the time the game gets here, you might be able to grab some Texas plus seven and a half. Um, What I'm most interested in is I've heard all the talk about how Texas's defensive line and their front seven is better and they're built for the SEC now, et cetera. Can they hold up? Because if they can, they might be able to bait Jalen Milrow into some bad decisions, we'll say. Uh, As far as the Texas offense, Look, if uh, if Key and Malachi Moore are out for that Bama secondary, eh, they, they're going to need a lot of help with getting home, right? Because you need those uh, those edge rushers to be able to get to Quinn Ewers. They can confuse him. They can get him on his heels. Uh, do you have the guys in the secondary to be able to stop that uh, that crazy crazy Texas wide receiver core? Uh, this is going to be a fun one. I'm I'm just very interested to see exactly. How what what pace the game is played at, et cetera. I I couldn't take the dog here, uh, but I at this point at this number I couldn't take the favorite either. I'm I'm staying away. I'm gonna use it's it as right, a big point. It's right where it should be. You think? And again, Sarkeesian was briefly a couple of stints with Alabama as the offensive coordinator before taking uh, the Texas job. And obviously, he's the former USC and Washington coach. Well documented problems. Texas will now be part, as Gary mentioned, of the SEC after this year. So this will be a semi regular matchup. We'll see this matchup on occasions uh, in the SEC now as a as a conference game. We still get it right now for the moment as a Big Twelve versus SEC game. We'll see what happens in that one. All right, by means of recap as we wrap it up on three dog thursday here are the underdogs for each of us gary going jacksonville state eastern michigan as road dogs and also likes cal at home out of the pac-12 as a home doggy getting six and a half the host will go with iowa state in the farmageddon matchup with iowa as a home dog give me also boise state as a home doggy a slight home doggy with ucf going all the way out to boise from orlando to boise and then i also like wazoo we both like a pac-12 home dog i like wazoo to maybe win the game outright with michigan and i will take those points take them grab them take those points on three dog (laughs) thursday anything else that we left out in closing my friend before we're done I don't think so. Uh, I think, you know, Oregon, Texas Tech, that's an interesting line. Um, I'm staying away because I I thought highly of Texas Tech coming into the season. They did not look good against Wyoming. If they made Andrew Peasley look like he can throw the football well, uh, I can't imagine what Bo Nix is going to do to him. But Lubbock is crazy. Crazy and, things happen and speaking of Texas, also Texas A&M at Miami. I think that line is about where it should be for Jimbo Fisher's yep. team. Miami still got a lot to prove against uh, against better competition for Mario Cristobal. Stay, we, we're big on the phrase "stay away" early on in the season. Stay away, <laughs> stay away. I think for that game uh, as well. 
besides the ones that we have. Gary, thank you so much. Great stuff as always. All the content on winningcureseverything.com. Again, Gary, Parker, and Kyle, Bet US TV. Get their handicapping there. We go underdog intensive on Three Dog Thursday every Thursday. Thank you as always, my friend. Good luck with the pooches. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. <laughs> Absolutely. Good luck on yours as well. <laughs> we love that. And again, whether you found us on video form, find us in podcast form, wherever you get podcasts under Three Dog Thursday. If you're only hearing us, come find the show, winningcureseverything.com and the Winning Cures platforms, including YouTube and everywhere else. For Gary Seegers, I'm TJ Reeves. Thank you for being with us. The college dogs are barking on Three Dog Thursday. <laughs>